Hello and welcome back. Here's what we're building. So this kit was first released in 1996 by Tamiya and this is the recent re-release. There's a minimal amount of prep including removing that and uh, the mold lines are generally pretty well hidden but there's just a few around the roof and the windscreen. I'm just using some fine sanding sticks to remove those. Before spraying, I'm using this anti-static brush just to uh, hopefully get rid of some of the uh, dust. I'm just using a Tamiya fine grey, light grey that is, uh, spray can. And there it is, primed. And then here we have got this uh, new Galeri airbrush. This is the uh, Swallowtail. And I'm using some Tamiya cockpit green. I was inspired by the uh, Land Rover, the first ever Land Rover that is, Huey, which is uh, in this sort of colour. It's a matte paint, so here it is after three coats. I'll be putting a clear coat over that later on. And here it is. I'm using Tamiya LP9, that's their lacquer gloss clear coat. I'll let that cure. Right then, with the engine. Firstly, there are some sort of sub-assemblies that can be done before this gets painted black. It's fairly small, but also it's uh, nice for a Tamiya kit to have an engine. A lot of their Japanese cars are curbside. Here it is after it's been painted black. There's the little distributor. It's a very small engine, I believe it's two cylinder. There we have it. Gearbox goes on the back like this. I actually found this join wasn't great, so you need to hold that in place to make sure that it's uh, stuck firm. Then the exhaust goes on the back. This has been painted in gunmetal. This needs to be put in from both sides, so you might want to hold that for a moment whilst it dries. And then as you can see, the undercarriage has already been painted the same green as the body, and that clips into place like so. Then some suspension parts which go on either side of this. And there's this little clip at the bottom to hold the engine into place. There's the axles. And then the brakes are made up of a couple of parts with the um, poly cap in the middle. Go onto these arms. All painted black, so quite simple. Not many colours are required for this kit. You can see there where I clipped some parts off. I'll, I'll clear up those later. Then you've got the front axles again with the poly cap on the inside. As you can see, I've already attached the um, parts of the suspension and then the steering arm clips together it's actually easiest if you attach this to both sides first and then put it into place sandwich that down with this suspension
and the steering works quite nicely. So as you can see here, the floor plan of the interior has been painted semi-gloss black. You've got this sort of center console arm. It's got these two handles which go uh, near the gear stick. I'm not sure what they are. If anyone knows more about the Fiat 500 could tell me, that'd be uh, appreciated. Dashboard done in body color with some semi-gloss black. And then I'm using this silver Posca paint pen to do the accents. This thing in the middle, rectangular thing, is that an ashtray? Does anyone know? Looks like it might be an ashtray. This car only comes left-hand drive. And then you've got the pedals at the bottom there. A little dial for the uh, instrument display. You've got a full decal sheet here. However, I'm actually only going to be using two. The little decal for the... Um, speedo here or the rev counter and the steering wheel is painted white with a little chrome and a semi-gloss black center and that's the dashboard finished Now the door cards were painted green, I masked them and then painted them red, which is the same colour as I'm doing the seats. I then painted all these handles black and went over the top of uh, two of them with the uh, silver Posca paint pen. Seats have also been done red and you've got these little black um, metal supports which go underneath. Make sure you get these supports as vertical as possible so that they fit the holes in the bottom. Dash goes in like so. Make sure you get this arm around the right way. You'll also see that just over the wheel arches at the back, I've painted it red. Those bits need to be the same color as your seats. Follow the instructions to make sure that you put all these parts in the correct order. There we have it. And then you've got this firewall that goes behind the engine. This was a bit of a tight fit, but it was okay in the end. And once that's secure, the seats go in front with the parcel shelf painted black. And there you can see the little bit of red coming out of the sides over the wheel arches. Door cards clip in on both sides. Oh, not glued yet. And there that's the interior finished. Now for the wheels, you've got these nice chrome hubcaps. They've been painted white. Unfortunately though, there's no detail underneath the cup cap, so that means you can't leave them off. I used a little bit of super glue to secure these into place. All the wheels and tires are the same. And then they secure on like so. Just a little bit of gentle pressure. Be careful with the front ones, you don't want to damage the suspension. And there it is, test fitted with the body on. Now these have got a nice set of window masks, which is great. When you apply the window masks, use something like a cocktail stick or similar to smooth them around the edge. For the side windows, you've got uh, three. Now most of the window trims need to be black, but the ones on the driver door need to be silver. So I did all of them in black, masked off the rear one, kept that one black, and painted the rest with some Vallejo Chrome. And the black underneath really helps the Chrome to pop as well. You'll see there's a couple of tabs, one at the back, one at the bottom. Put a little bit of um, foam safe super glue onto that and then carefully push them into place. 
I probably should be wearing gloves for this kind of job, don't want to get fingerprints on it. Got the rear view mirror, which is from the chrome sprue. And you've got the boot handle at the back. I've done a little black rubber trim around the bottom. Now this needs to be slid into place and then taped over the rest of the body before it um, attaches so that the hinges are in the correct place. Now this looked all correct, but after I did it, I found it was very difficult to open the um, engine cover. So take care, and if you want your engine to be on display, I think you may need to uh, kind of fine tune this. Here again, I'm using a bit of foam safe super glue to fit the windows. A little folded piece of tape like this really helps hold the window without having to touch it. And the headlights from the chrome sprue with the clear front. Badge. And the bumper. Found that the bumpers actually went on without any glue. Windscreen wipers. As you can see, I've already attached the indicators. Now for the wipers, they were chrome, but I used a bit of black Sharpie to add the rubber trim to the underside of them. You could use paint if you don't have a Sharpie. These do turn, so you could position them uh, half working if you wanted. Now for the tail lights, I used some clear orange and clear red. And also I did the surround with a um, silver Posca paint pen, just like before. Once they're dried, glued them on with again, a bit of foam safe super glue. Got the boot handle, it's an engine cover I should say. And as you can see, it doesn't open very well. I didn't want to force it. Door handles, these went in without any glue, just need a bit of firm pressure. Now I wasn't happy with the number plates, so I found this one from a Revell Beetle kit. However, I did use the badge on the front. I stuck the number plates onto some thin plastic card and cut them out. I think these are um, number plates from Milan. They look pretty accurate and the smaller one at the front. I've actually just used a little bit of uh, blue tack. That's like poster tack to attach these. You've got these two chrome stickers, which are nice. You've got the sort of earlier new 500 one, Nueva 500, or you've got the Fiat 500 badge. I went for the slightly more modern one as I think that this plate might be sort of 60s or 70s, not sure. Yeah, I look pretty happy with that. Just used a little bit of panel line accent for the uh, vent here. Make sure to clear that up afterwards. And then you've got two options with the roof, either open or closed. Wing mirrors went in again without the need for any glue. Just need to be very careful with these. And there we have it, it's finished. I'm really happy with how this kit's turned out. It's an iconic Italian car. Let me know what you think. For value, I'm giving this a four out of five. You can get it for about 25 pounds new. For assembly, it's pretty simple and it didn't give me many issues, but the engine cover didn't open very well, so I'm gonna give it a four. Accuracy is good, lots of detail in the engine bay and the interior and two roof options, but only left-hand drive, so it's another four out of five. This is a high quality kit from Tamiya with lots of decal options. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. And finally, Legacy, as we said in the unboxing, this is the Italian people's car, so it's a 5 out of 5. That gives it a total of 21 out of 25. This kit's really highly recommended. Hope you uh, get your hands on one of these if you want to build one. Have you built one already? Will you be getting one of the Abarth kits? I'll see you soon.